Welcome to the launch of the Radical Geographer's Handbook. Radical Geography has been around since the 1960s and Antipode, the Journal of Radical Geography, started publishing in 1969. Uh, Radical Geography in the classroom uh, is something a little newer and teachers have often been reluctant to engage in a radical sense with their students. Now, the economic, political, social and environmental global issues that we are increasingly experiencing have created a sense of urgency. Uh, we must challenge business as usual. The time is now. We all need to be more radical. You can access the handbook online. Here are some fellow radical geographers. Hello. I'm Alan Parkinson, and even in my bedroom, on lockdown, I am a radical geographer. Hi, I'm Kit, and I'm radical in so many ways, but in no more so than geography. Just being who I am and existing as who I am and letting geography help me to share that makes me very, very radical. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm a radical geographer because I like to challenge the status quo. Hi there, I'm Ben, uh, I'm a radical geographer. Uh, we want to ensure that we see students really engaging with data and uh, evidence so that they can really take part in some of the really big issues in geography. Uh, things like climate change, migration, uh, I don't know, things, even things like Brexit, maybe polit political ideas, uh, but being informed so that they can take part in these debates uh, and create a positive social change. Uh, and that's what I think radical geographers should be about. Now more than ever, we need to resist the comforts of armchair geography and start asking, teaching and debating the questions no one else dares to ask. I'm a radical geographer because I demand that teachers and students tackle stereotypes and um, review their misconceptions and spend time and energy finding out what the real world is like. My name is David and I am a radical geographer. I believe that geography plays a crucial role in helping young people to appreciate and respect our planet. It also helps them to look forward to a future filled with hope, faith in human progress and mutual understanding. Hello, so what I'm going to do now then is just uh, go through the booklet and show you and talk about some, some more of it. But... What I wanted to start with was just to say again that, you know, this is playful in the sense that um, we're trying to be a little bit provocative uh, in what we're doing. But it's also really important because we are trying to, in our opinion, focus on what we think are some of the most important global issues. Um, and, and what we're trying to say is that there are teachers who are doing these sorts of things and there are people who have got maybe different practices or, or alternative approaches and are using quite innovative and creative tools but what we are saying is we need to bring that to the masses we need to get most teachers doing these things and that's the only way that we're then going to um, properly tackle and scale up the impact of, of, of these things um, so what we've got here is the kind of poster girl of the environmental movement. This is Greta. The, the thing I wanted to focus on was this idea that she says no one is too small to make a difference. And that's also a key message in terms of what we're saying is that both for teachers and for um, students, that when you as a, as a teacher are in your classroom, you are in control of what you're saying and the activities and the images and the videos that you might use and just subtle changes in the way that you emphasize language or the words you use or the um, examples that you incorporate into your lessons can have a really dramatic impact in terms of students understanding um, of the nature of the world uh, we've got here this um, Sit, uh, list of 11 challenges and some of these you know you might have um, already started thinking about but the, the key one here is this idea that we're, we're saying look you need to teach what you love and not to the exam the uh, exam syllabus is not the curriculum the curriculum is for you as a teacher using your own agency to kind of construct and it's that that you should have and play greater importance than some sort of assessment objectives 
Um, what about the, uh, you could challenge a school community to score 100% on the gap mind or ignorance test. Look, this is something that a lot of schools have jumped on board with and said, look, um, I've got the backing of the head teacher. We want everyone in the school. We're going to use an assembly and, and share it through some sort of online platform and get everyone to have a go at the test. And they have to keep doing it until they get 100%. Um, you could um, look at how much carbon is locked away in the trees in your on your school sites or in your local town. And, and then you can do action so that you can triple it. Uh, the focus of a lot of this is actually saying Let, let's get people using their human agency to, to improve the world and to change things. Um, so we've got the, the conference bingo here that hopefully you've been using. But the, the other key message is this idea of hope in that we are saying um, it's through um, a better understanding of the world that you actually can become more hopeful. And by understanding your uh, place within it and the ability for you to be able to um, improve and change the world, you can make the world the place that you want it to be. And therefore, you can make it a sort of positive and better place. And that's all about them making the world happier and healthier, both for people, but also the planet itself. Um, so we've got stuff here about um, uh, climate change and the anthropocene we've got stuff about plastics a lot of it's kind of an alternative perspective well actually look um the majority of plastic in the oceans 46 percent comes from fishing gear and only 0.03 percent comes from plastic straws well you know are we focusing on the right thing um uh, so how we engage with public space and open spaces and, and how much space we give to to children and the ability for them to feel safe um uh you got the ideas about activism and is activism learning um you know, where is the line in particular how where is it when does it become sort of propaganda or using children to 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 for your own means um to spread a message um things about gdp things about income um you know what is it normal income and normal income in the uk where does that place you in the rest of the world these are some of this is really powerful that if you properly understand it you can then understand um your place in the world in a better way Thinking about uh, field work, and, and a lot of the time we sort of minimise the imagination that students are allowed, and the freedom and the creativity within field work. Um, flying for school trips, you know, is it crazy? Even offsetting, carbon offsetting, is it a genuine activity? Um, women and the sort of emancipation of women, well, actually, how much has changed over the last hundred years? Particularly in schools, you know, the kind of percentages are really stark. Language that we use, you know, using outdated language, do students have an up-to-date uh, worldview? Um, you know, provocative activities like saying, let's go for a poverty safari, where we need to go to find the richest or the poorest or the average street in our local area, and using that then as a platform for discussion. Um, putting the face to a lot of these um, issues, yeah, and using imagery and people rather than just numbers and data. Um, We've also then this is these are some sort of future or forward thinking organizations and the more you can incorporate those ideas and their resources into your teaching that's much the better these are books that definitely every teacher should read and even you know, should be encouraging your students to and they really open up the way then that you engage with certain issues and um, we've also then got uh, Ed Hawkins warming stripes here again another really visual impact about the stark um, representation of climate change there yeah, and I'm just going to finish with, the, you know, this is where we're at. This is the world we're in, 413 parts per million. And this is the urgency that we need and the reason that we need to be more radical.